50 volt potential difference is applied to a vertical deflection plate as shown. And as the electrons pass between these plates, they're deflected upwards, as you see in the picture. And we want to know what is the vertical force acting on each electron as it passes through the plates. Well, the force is due to the electric field provided by the plates. And that electric field would be quite massive. If I actually drew a little free body diagram of our electron, it would look as follows. There's some sort of electric force acting up due to the electric field. And down, technically, if this picture is orientated right, would be the force of gravity. But the force of gravity in this, this diagram I've drawn is way out of scale, is way, way smaller. It's always insignificant to the electrostatic force. So we're not going to worry about the force of gravity when we talk about electrons. It has to have some significant mass to it for that gravitational force to have any bearing. If you included it, it wouldn't change your answer one bit. It would be correct, you could do it, but it wouldn't change what your final answer would be. So we're going to just focus on the electric force. Now we know earlier that electric field is defined as electric force per unit charge. So if I want to solve for force, it's going to be electric field times the charge of my electron. Now, the electric field that occurs between parallel plates can be calculated by saying electric field is voltage across the plates divided by the distance between the plates. And they give you all of that information. So we're going to replace E with voltage across the plates divided by distance. And we'll leave the rest as is. Now we simply solve. So our voltage across the plates was 150. The separation between the plates was 7.5 millimeters. So I want to convert that to meters. So that's 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. So there's my electric field. And Q is an electron. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now, I've already established that my force is up based on my free body diagram. So we're calculating my electrostatic force. And when I do that, I end up getting 3.2 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons, and we know that it's up. Now, just as a side note, if I calculated the force of gravity acting on that electron, so I'll just do it really quickly over here. We'll just use mg. The mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And we're basically multiplying that by 10. So 9.8 meters per second squared. And really all that happens when I multiply it by 10 is this just increases by one value. So this becomes 10 to the negative 30. So it's going to be roughly 9.11 times 10 to the negative 30 kilograms. Well, Negative 30 is many, many times order of magnitude smaller than negative 15. So that's why we don't bother worrying about the force of gravity.